Hello and Hello. welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our the Crate and Crowbar plays Dark Souls 2. Long awaited, much anticipated. <laughs> I'm Marsh Davis. I'm joined by Tom Senior. Hello. Who's holding the control pad. Richard Stanton will be joining us in later episodes. You but will. for now, with some much needed expertise. It's going to be us it is. starting off. Um, so there's a video sequence before this that shows your kind of raggedy character belly flopping into a dark whirlpool and being kind of transported to this place. And uh, that's all we know. It's quite nice though, isn't it? It's alright. Yeah. It's in a cave. Big crack of light. I've actually um, completely forgotten this part of the game now since I've played... Uh, I didn't play any of Dark Souls 1 when we did our playthrough, but I had uh, played quite a lot of Dark Souls 2 by now. Mm. But this part is, just, is long in my it. memory, yeah. I've forgotten it's all weird about it. kind of creatures. Uh, there are a lot of um, weird... Like, it's quite menacing the first time you go through there. You kind of see these things. You're used to you know, being in danger in Dark Souls, and kind of, I, I thought they were really threatening. I might just look at the kill me. But this whole place is quite um, massive. What's this? <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> you're not that great looking either. Basically, anyway, shall we skip yes. this part? Yeah, basically, yeah. old ladies, ask you your name. What's our name, Tom? Um. No. Thurston? Thurston. <laughs> Good work. There we are. I suppose well for the rest of the play. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah, sure we have There we are. Alright, okay. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Barely, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, do you recognise these people, Marsh? No! I don't. I thought these were completely new characters for Dark Souls 2, but you no, have a different theory. No, I think they're uh, it's a human effigy. keepers of the flame. Uh, who you meet in Dark Souls 1. Really, though? Guardians, really? Flame Guardians. Um, let's talk to the younger lady in here. I think she tells you. I don't know what that's supposed to be, actually. That's kind of one of the weird things about this game, the human effigies. It watches humanity in Dark Souls 1. Hmm. Nice, nice this. Well, it's a completely different system of... well. And stuff, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the metaphysics of it is a different thing mm. in Dark Souls 2. I assume they changed that for just pure gameplay reasons, really. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't imagine it plays that well into the lore of the previous game. Not very well. Yeah. So what are we going to be? What are we going to be? Uh, well, should we get through this relatively quickly, to, yeah. just so people don't have to watch menus? Let's go for um, like we all know that we, we could go naked. But we I, could go naked, but Rich isn't here, and <laughs> to make us go naked. <laughs> and also, I did do that in a previous playthrough, and it was um, fucking awful. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> you, you're so underleveled. I should be a warrior. Like sword and board. Sure, um, I, like, I like hidden things. Yeah. That's what it is. Is it really? Cool. Okay. Yeah. Is this your true self? That's the true Thurston. Wow. Well, well, you know. So. For the same reason, yeah. to break the curse. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. blah. Interesting law stuff that we're skipping. There we go. That's all the good stuff. That's the stuff you don't get if you're naked. I wonder. Actually, we might have a whole load of DLC uh, item, pre-order DLC items oh, yeah. in our uh, inventory. I don't know. Um, no, we don't. Uh, let's check it. Check weapons. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to have to resist using them. Oh, that's nice or, them. or just use them. <laughs> they all suck anyway, cheap. basically. It's because of a broken straight sword. We're doing damage. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't realise. A link between Drangleic and Fair Traveller. Why else would you visit this lost, decayed kingdom? Right. Find our purpose soon enough. The Firekeepers. Fire oh shit, how did I miss that? <laughs> they are the Firekeepers from the first game. And this is kind of, this, uh, it's called uh, the place betwixt or something. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like a, um, a peaceful purgatorial realm in between all the other realms that Dark okay. Souls can play together. Convalescence home for... Uh... Uh, yeah, it is. Look, it's just an old person's home for these uh, magical women. <laughs> they had a terrible time in Dark Souls 1, um, so they deserve their time. Right. 
find this big one. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought a whole bunch of them got killed. In Dark Souls yeah, I one. think these are kind of refugees of that the cult, or whatever. Hmm. So and here we go. Bonfire. First bonfire. Whoosh. Bonfire lit. What's this? Um. Torch. Interesting. What? Oh, he's got a torch. So, what's our plan here? What are we? Uh, what are we hoping to achieve? Um. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go through this place. This is basically a big tutorial location. You yeah, down these various kind of side paths and teach you how to hit things, but we don't have much. Yeah, I mean, is, is it worth harvesting the souls from these assholes? Mm, Probably not, not. Not really. No. You're not going to face the two, um, the two oh, big golem creatures. Yeah, no, they're hiding quite an interesting thing. But I think you have to go through some of the passages in order to get to them, right? Because uh, okay. because uh, you knock down right. uh, ladders and stuff. What it writes. So here we go. Our first introduction to a fog gate in Dark Souls Two. Oh, look at that. Pro moves. Slash. Into the back. Danny See, goes. I never bothered circling around people in Dark Souls 2. I just ensure that I've got a big enough weapon that I can hit them in the face. That's a perfectly good idea. <laughs> um, one of the frustrating things about Dark Souls 2 is that all of the major kind of great weapons, uh, the things that you can kind of convert these great souls into weapons, they're all uh, great swords. There are no kind of nice kind of oh, really? dex weapons. I love having dex weapons. No, I like that. Like being kind of low on armor, so I can roll out the way of things, and then just hitting, making sure I can roll out the way of attacks, and then that was my build. Oh, there he is. Oh, those jerks down there! I still haven't been able to kill them. Uh, many, many levels later. Yeah, so there's only one level that's actually one hiding, sneaking around the corner there. Uh, can't just get the action. Dick wads. One. I don't know if we're supposed to be like these torch um, But torch lighting is one of the kind of most underused mechanics in Dark Souls 2. Hmm. There are torches everywhere, and uh, you can kind of constantly pick up torches, and there are things called flame boss flies that let you light torches all the time. But lighting never does anything, and it feels to me as though it's kind of. Like, might have been what Dark Souls 2 was really supposed to be all about. It was fighting through locations, really dark locations, mm. and then gradually lighting them up. Because you kind of see a lot of levels designed around yeah. torches like that. I mean, some of them have that in a more prescriptive way than the torches, like uh, in, in the, I forget the name of the Pirate Cove now, Pan, but there's like a, there's an actual large torch that you can use to illuminate the entire thing and yeah. it scares off certain enemies. Yeah, that's right. And um, when you saw like early versions of Dark Souls 2, it had a completely different lighting engine. Oh. Like a dynamic lighting and um, the environments were a lot darker and it was like kind of more interesting. I do wonder if uh, a lot of the environments you go to, the earlier ones, were supposed to be extremely dark, which uh, this was sort of redesigned. That would make sense because a lot of the environments in Dark Souls 2 are kind of oddly fugly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet some of them are beautiful, you know. It's a, I don't know whether that's just because they put their, their lesser artists on certain on certain levels or. But it's certainly feel rushed to me, to be honest. Um, you can't, you can't know that, but um, it's interesting. That will come relevant later. Yep. Um, also, Dark Souls One. We could have actually. Um, could we not have gained the item already for that if we had chosen to fight a hippo monster in the starting area that we actually stuck past? You wouldn't necessarily notice the entrance to that on your first playthrough, right? No, that's true. Um, I think that was this. I just want to. I just want to give him a nice hug. You need to go around the other side and get the tree down. I guess it's up here in the aft. Right, yeah, so this was the kind of like the first big gotcha surprise coming up, isn't it? Mm. Here's yes. your uh, bishop's tipple for you there, Tom. Thank you so much. This podcast not sponsored by Wadsworth, but if uh, they want to give us a call, <laughs> just saying, I'll put that somewhere, do that there. 
with the success move. Come on, Gabba. A Brack Spears Oxford Gold. Mm. One of my favourite bottle veils. Oh, really? it happens here. Yeah. Like it's not from the way here. Who are these people? Why are they hanging around here? <laughs> what is this place? Um, it's all kind of irrelevant. There's kind of a lot of uh, places in Dark Souls 2 that just don't have a purpose other than to be a game area. Which is kind of a bit different from Dark Souls 1. Where it feels like a living city that has been just broken down, right? Yeah, totally. Whereas yeah. Dark Souls 2 feels a lot like a game area. Sorry my chair is so fucking squeaky. So I don't mind. You're not going to be able to kill these guys, right? No. Well, I, no, oh especially dear. not after this. No, not the face. Not You'll be face. fine. You'll be f oh. bleeding. It's the oh, least of my worries, though, really, isn't it, at that point. <laughs> um, that coffin you can see on the right there—it's quite interesting. Yes. So I've never defeated those enemies. Maybe. Are we? Will we later in this game series? Maybe we should reveal. Back. You know. Yes. Keep the reveal for a later date. Mysterious coffin thing. Yeah. All right. Well, we've seen those guys. We've been killed by them. That's what we set That's out to achieve. What we're talking about here, basically, <laughs> is to meet everyone in Dark Souls Two and get destroyed by them. Yep. So let's get on and uh, go to Medulla. Um, I mean, I guess perhaps you don't expect that it's just a tu tutorial area, quite transparently. So maybe you don't want that narrative interest there. Ooh, hello. Beware. Yeah. Good thing about um, Dark Souls 2 on PC is that the online stuff actually works. Yeah, it's still really uh, lively as well. There's loads and loads of people. And there's still people who are coming through the game for the first time, or at least with low-level characters, mm. since it's not difficult to find people who are at similar level to you, it seems. No, it's, uh, it works really, really well. There are, um, the interesting thing about it is that um, players obviously duel and stuff all the time, sort of PvP in this game. Mm. And uh, players have found certain spots where they like to put down their markers to, to fight. So you'll come across certain bridges and certain places that are just complete PvP spots, and you'll just see signs all over the place. Mm. They become these uh, organic and impromptu battlegrounds to players, which is awesome. What a lovely place we've come to! Uh, it's a beautiful place. So nice. Lovely music as well. Plinky, plinky music. On fire. On. We're coming back here a lot. This is Medulla. This is at the heart of Dark Souls 2. Yeah, um, Dark Souls 1 doesn't really have kind of a hub area of this kind of magnitude. You are oh. undead, aren't you? You have that distinct Rose. scent, the smell of irreversible things. <laughs> this is Majula. It is a kind of settlement, a place where life is almost normal. Yeah, all right. Not, not that normal. Uh, like these days, there are very few places like that. He's not wrong, but um. Uh, Majora is very different from anywhere in Dark Souls 2 in that it is, does resemble a village and it is mm. functioning like it's got people living here, it's got people selling stuff to each other. There's a, a haunted mansion over there. As every village does actually have. Well, they have a haunted mansion. Yeah. That is kind of There's a mansion. talking cat, there just like. Talking uh, cat, yeah. yeah, just like in Twerton, actually. Giant fucking pit. Giant fucking ominous pit. Yeah. Of the village. Yep. Try jumping down that later. Yep. Um, Won't do it just yet. Probably best not. You can no. see from the blood stains all around the rim. Doesn't go well for people. It's a thingy in the well, isn't there? I think. There is. Bonk. Mmm, delicious! Yeah. Lovely glowing thing attached to a man, dead man's genitals. And there's nasty things here, though, key. You don't want to fuck with these dudes, do you? No. Just thought I'd set them off so people could see them. Oh, little mole dudes. What are they? They're kind of little moles, aren't they? No. They're not nice. Uh, there's a boss much later in the game. Uh, kind of dark witch who just summons loads of those. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the only other time they're going to go. It's locked. Mm. To be continued. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting things. In I love how we're setting up the dramatic irony here for the uh, <laughs> for our viewers. Absolutely. What could be through this door? <laughs> I actually forgot that was locked. I thought we might get to see something. Um, right. It's very easy to go the wrong way at this point. In fact, if we go over there, there's a shrine where you activate it, mm. and uh, you join a covenant that makes the entire game really hard. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't tell you that that's going to happen. Um, Do you want to see the bonfire? Have, uh, we, have we done that? Yeah, we've done that. It's all lit. Oh yes, yeah, that's sorry. Yeah, that'd be good. This is the great location. First time. Can you not go into? Uh, there's another place 
on the other side. And I think I went here much, much later, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I think I went all the way through to um, Heidi's Tower of Flame the first time. Wow, that means uh, you'll see Park and Watch, because everything's a lot harder than no. the And uh, everything is a bit easier this way. Did you find when you came through the here that enemies were kind of weak? Yes, actually I did. And in fact, I didn't just do Heidi's Tower of Flame. I did the, um, the there's a kind of foresty area, which you, there's like, uh, your progress through there is blocked by a, um, somebody who's been frozen. Uh, yes. appears to be a statue. Mm. Um, but I fought my way up to there first. Because this area isn't obvious. Like, as you say, mm. you turn around from Filing Shrine and the main town is in front of you. And this kind of little side alley slips down on the left and you just don't see it. Seems kind of intentional, doesn't it? Seems as though they want you to go into somewhere hard. And and punish yourself first. Yeah. But actually, this game's a lot more generous, I think, um, than Dark Souls 1. It doesn't try and fuck you over quite as much. Um, no, it doesn't. Like, the last thing I played in Dark Souls 1 was um, Nano Londo, <laughs> the kind of... Uh, uh, Nano Londo, where you're going with these tiny, narrow spears, uh, kind of buttresses, mm, yeah. while still fighting things, while being shot at by things <laughs> that you can't hit. Yeah. And uh, that's just like, it's horrible. We go and into like there's a lot of, there's a lot of sunny areas. It's sunny as can be, but you know, compared to Dark Souls One, mm. which is obviously very nice to go. Oh. Let's try. Doing a lot of um, circle stripping. Your tactics in this game are uh, very very different to uh, the way I play it, yeah. which is possibly uh, because I'm not playing it well. I admit, but uh... He's just freaking out on his own over there. Yeah, I use a lot of circuit trading and stuff. So I've, um, in the my main playthrough, I've got Katana, which is like really pimped up. And... I find it very difficult to work out where um, where the kind of extent of their the radius of their swing will be. So mm. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't naturally try and trust circle trading because I would be worried that I'd be caught in one of their swinging blows, regardless of how quickly I kind of strafed around them. Yeah, I mean the role um, as in Dark Souls One has a few frames of complete invincibility built into it. Hmm. Um, so that's how you do a lot of you circle straight around them, and then as they swing, you just, just roll under their slash. Oop. Roll under this man's slash, and then <laughs> then uh, there's a stat called adaptability, which increases your agility and gives you more frames of invincibility. Again, you'll never know that by just like playing the game. No, uh, in fact, actually, one of the things that I find confusing about Dark Souls Two is, um, oh, unfortunate timing. Is the way that they've used the adaptability stat. In fact, a lot of the stats, I think they've they tried to make things easier for people, but at the same time, they've made things slightly less intuitive. Mm. Like they've shifted, they've kind of combined certain stats together, um, which is kind of a blessing in some ways. But at the same time, they've shifted things into stats which don't really seem to have any direct bearing on your abilities. Yeah. Don't actually have an Estus Flask yet. Which is Get this painfully slow recovery speed. See, oh, I thought you dodged out of the way of him then. Mm, just about got me. This guy doesn't stand That's a chance. Fine. Too slow. Conquistador. Why are they dressed as conquistadors? Don't know. Well, they're citizens of the um, ruined town. That's what which has its own reasons for being fucked up. So there's no... Oh yeah, this is quite a dangerous area. Oh god. I say you're, oh god. you're equipping yourself quite well here, uh, really. Uh, uh, I think this is new for Dark Souls 2. <laughs> yes! Right, a couple of these guys will follow me down, I'll just do them one by one. Um, seeing this actually um, the health bar, hmm. we've died a couple of times, and it seems to be smaller. Oh yes, I forgot that was the difference. Yeah. Huge uh, difference in the way that gosh. Yeah. Although, you can fairly quickly get a, a ring which mitigates the amount of health that you lose per replay. I mean, you would, you can go human, right? You can take a human effigy and, become, and unhollow yourself, and then you get your full health bar back, which is obviously the game. what the game is trying to incentivize you to do, and thus make yourself vulnerable to 
uh, online incursions and things. Mm. Um, but there's a ring which allows you to play the game pretty much entirely as hollow with like three quarters of your health bar. And actually, I, I just did that because yeah, I'm too. so afraid of being invaded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a good way of doing it. It's the ring of binding um, halves the amount of decay to your health bar. And uh, yeah, and then also there's a hard limit on it as well. So as you can see, you can only take it down to 75%. Who's that like, chap? This guy, we'll see more of, uh, more of his kind later. Seem dangerous to you? Uh, I imagine if you hit him, he might be. He's also okay for the moment. A lot of a lot of baddies around him. Yeah, and gee, that's one of the interesting things, isn't it, with this this setup is that he uh, it's tempting you to hit somebody accidentally as mm, well. Absolutely. Right, let's go this way first because I think the weapon will be up there. I see. Although you're right entirely about the the fact that a lot of the places in Dark Souls are just set up to be game places rather than places which have, have any kind of distinct history. No. I think they're actually very cleverly set up in terms of the. Uh, the individual arena's design, like maybe not so much in terms of the kind of the broad strokes of the way that the different parts of the entire geography of the land fit together, which is kind of much more um, tightly knit together in Dark Souls 1, mm. but in terms of the way that this particular level, for example, you loop around and you get verticality on the place that you've just, just been, actually I think that's, that's actually been an improvement in the game. Absolutely, and one of the most popular messages you'll see in Dark Souls, um, these orange messages people leave on the ground, is revenge. Um, when this moment where you, mm. you get bothered by an archer down there and then you get to come up here and hurrah for revenge, mm -hmm. <laughs> give that a rating, because uh, that's exactly what you think. Uh, You've broken your sword here. So this is another thing that's new with Dark Souls 2, is weapon de degradation mm. in a big way. And just hitting your weapon against walls will, um, will make it fall apart and then you lose a huge amount of damage. Um, dealing. You might have to take a DLC weapon, Tom. Oh, I don't, I'm not going to do it, Mark. <laughs> Just not going to do it. They're, they're ugly as well. Do they don't look nice, it's true. I think that might be intentional. Mm. Kind of these, like, yeah, uh, the, 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 they look like kind of uh, huge cancerous kind of growths on the side of your weapons, mm. you know, out of crystals and stuff. Not appealing. So didn't stop me using it on the first time though, because I'm a fucking coward. But also I didn't realise that they were DLC. I just, cause it just drops I, it in there, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't explain what they are. I just looked at my inventory and was like, oh, why am I using this shit weapon? <laughs> <laughs> Got this great thing. Let's leave him for now. We'll are they? Oh, 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 low. Cheeky. Oh, way more damage, look at that. Ah, oh, lovely. That's more like it. Thurston, short. <laughs> Really satisfying animation that. That'll become completely irrelevant when we actually start <laughs> using Estus masks. Oh yes, mm. I remember where we are. Mm. Hmm. I bet there's I bet he's on his own. <laughs> <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, enjoying some enjoying some. There definitely wouldn't be an ambush there or here. Ah! No worries. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna this one. What I like about this I know I would like about both games actually, but particularly this the sequence of starting levels is that each of these enemies is easily defeatable by themselves, but the way that they're placed in the levels and the way that they they confound your expectations or surprise you or ambush you mm. makes them a very deadly threat. And that's you know that's that's a perfect game balance, isn't it? Because it makes your weapons and your abilities feel suitably lethal while at the same time creating uh, a challenge which is commensurate to that, you know. It also um, does a really good job of teaching you what different weapons do. Uh, so you, there are axe dudes who will kind of have big overhead thrusts that do lots of damage, and then kind of um, always check the corners and all things. Dudes with uh, like this, big sword. You get used to all the attack patterns they have, and those are kind of replicated mm. throughout the game by various enemies. Nice try, mate. Yeah, the old three, one, two, three swing. And then occasionally you get an enemy which does four, and you're like, fuck! Uh, oh. But some guys, uh, they, they just occasionally will change from a normal combo into like a frenzy of attacks, and then you just have to learn to. Hmm. Uh, that's well. up there. Also, apologies if you can hear a baby crying. <laughs> that's some shitty child that's outside. A... <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's too hardcore. Yeah. That's no. too hardcore. Uh, like, this is just a, a knob of a situation. Whatever way you look at it, that guy's got a missile weapon. <laughs> and, uh, right through the head. Um, like, you just go for a run up here and just get stuck in, basically. 
Oh, and the fire bombs yep. as well. Horrible fire bombs, the right thing. Good move. They move extremely slowly for projectiles, luckily. And this guy never seems particularly keen to come off there. Oh, oh, it's fine. oh, 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 God. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. Oh, oh good. Oh. Quick blow before he um, did his final. You can see uh, the weapons at the bottom left of the screen. There's a little health bar for the sword hmm. uh, under it. Half, half, halfway down already. Is there another guy there? Right. I think yeah, there's, at least, there's at least some goodies over there. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Some Hello! Oh, hi. We're making good pace here. Uh, I think it helps that we know where we're going. Yeah. And we're probably not being quite as cautious as we would be if we were playing it for the first time and didn't know where any of the enemies were. Yeah, it took me ages to go through this bit. Um, because this environment really loops back on itself, and there are a lot of ways you can go initially. Um, but I think it's the next bonfire right now. Put it down here in a minute. Oh, that's an exciting area. Yeah. Interesting things down there. And there's a dude right here. But there right. Is. But he's having a lie down. That's my. Having, having a little sleep. I'll teach you to lie down. Sleep yeah. no more. Or sleep forever. <laughs> depending on your interpretation of metaphorical. <laughs> This is lovely. Yeah. It's one of my favourite rooms in the game. That's yeah, pretty cool. It's a coolish room. I, I, I like it. It's got the. Um, it's got ladies. It's, haven. it's also. Um, it's got a crone. It's got a crone. Every room needs a crone. Bonus crone. That's why it's one of my favourite rooms. She's so. Um, quite pathetic character. So every time you see uh, the link with Dark Souls 1, would you do me the, uh, the favour of shouting out? Because I didn't really detect that many, really. There were quite, um, there are a lot of them there. But I haven't got that far through the game, I'm, I'm probably only halfway through, so... Yeah, there are, um, there are a lot of small kind of links, and it ties into Dark Souls 2's overall theme, hmm. which is that um, these, these, these realms we're passing through are in the throes of a great cy cycle sure. of birth and destruction, which is kind of similar to Dark Souls 1. Um, like Dark Souls 1, you come into... Uh, Lordran and it's on its last legs. So mm. It's almost completely fucked. The darkness, the abyss has come to take it and sinking, sinking down to that. And um, a lot of the kind of calamities you come across uh, are the gods trying to fix that using just brutal methods, um, desperate methods. Get to the um, this fellow will have a pop at you. This halberd. Oh, and his mate as well. Oh gosh. Hello. Oh, blimey. Oh dear. You'll have him. Ah, how about you? Ah, oh, oh have God, me. No, that's wrong. You're back into a corner here, yeah, Tom. This is this really, is, really, this really is not really good. Bad. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, right. that was uh, just hit. I didn't want to be there. No, I need to kill the guy sitting now. Quickly, I forgot he was alive. Second death. Hmm. So this place we're in is um. I can't remember the name of the town. We'll probably look at some items in a bit that will tell us. Uh, but Peas down St. John. <laughs> it's been uh, obliterated, smashed. Uh, a lot of these kind of the trees that are kind of tearing it down, that's got important as well because it's been, a, it's been assaulted by giants. Um, mm. Part of the overall story. We'll see some giants later, no doubt. Well, uh, but giants are kind of closely associated with forest life. Oh, we've got a bastard sword. Can you use that yet, though? That's the question. I'll date the shrink. But, well, look. After you've dealt with this jerk. I also never block. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty much. Really useful. <laughs> yeah, really super useful. Uh, roll out of the way. <laughs> it's fine. If you've got like, a great sword or something, um, it depends a lot on how quickly you stagger enemies, really. Mm, that's the idea, yeah. You hit an enemy, then they don't have a chance to kind of finish their attack and yeah. then uh, it's sorted. Yeah, this is interesting, this area, because there's so many different doors here that uh, are locked to you at the start. And um, as with Dark Souls 1, I think there's an enemy right behind you, actually. No, just lying down? No, oh, he's not active. This guy. Yeah, there he is. Um, yeah. But as with Dark Souls 1, as you progress through level, you unlock these doors and they link, link you back to the areas from which you came in a kind of rather, rather neat way. But it's quite difficult to keep keep a kind of sense of that geography in your head at all times. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's why it, it, it takes a long time to go through these areas in the beginning. Ah, oh, this place is coming around. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a bit of a dick, actually, this part. <laughs> We're off a dashing tree. Really? 
Did I do that? I don't think I did. <clears throat> oh yes, I remember this. Oh. Uh, so there's... Yeah. Oh, he was almost going for the fourth swing there, wasn't yeah, he? he was. Cheeky devil. Just realised this um, sword has a really good thrusting attack. Uh, which will see us. The first and thrust. Back in action. Absolutely. Dusted off. Oh, really? You're going to do that, are you? Um, Go on. I can't quite remember what happens. Oh, hi. That's one thing. Oh. There you are. Ah, oh, <laughs> So I guess this is like the, the first proper boss that you can oh God, run into. No <laughs> um, yes. Although at this stage, probably not the boss that you can really fight. No, there's no way I'm going to be able to take him. that damage. Ow. You'll be fine. <laughs> Does he pursue you if you jump down from this area? Time to find out. Jump on these. He no, he doesn't. He doesn't live up to his name at all, does he? Pretty crap at pursuing. So there's a dude up there throwing things. I think you can open a secret passage here if you get him to throw a firebomb at ah, those barrels. Quite very much. Oh, it didn't work for some reason. Oh, right. No, I think you're right there. Oh, no, there is a way to get that wall down. And maybe you have to throw a firebomb yourself for some mm. reason. Oh. I have to say, I... Your, your repertoire of moves is so in, in advance of mine. I just stick to like just rolling and hitting, <laughs> and then somehow that served me up until now. Yeah, it, Yet, uh, it, I just love the sword and board kind of thing the Dark Souls. He said, Come on down. You no, he doesn't, never does it. Oh, man. Afraid. Um, yeah, that's the reason why I like the sword and board kind of approach, um, one handed weapon. Because you get loads and loads of different moves, and in fact, different types of short, short sword and long sword. But that move, what, what the fuck is that? I've never even, never even thought to do that. It's uh, just tap forward and heavy attack at the same time. You do the <laughs> overhanded kind of smash. It's great for um, if they're just kind of not blocking properly in that range. Right, that probably doesn't happen with a, with a two-handed weapons. You also uh, that knocks their shield out of the okay. way. Come on. Right, let's see if we can blow that wall up because it will save a lot. Of time. You don't have any bombs. But you could buy some from the crone and then come back around. Oh, you've got a firebomb, there you go. I I it's probably a, is that a DLC or is that just a... Mm, I think I'll pick one up. Um. Oh, well. I think maybe you need to hit the barrels. Rather than the... Um, oh, well, bomb the barrels. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll be alright. <laughs> that would take an inspect the... the, the, the Bonfire with a crone, yeah. but um, he's zipping through this man. This is mm. impressive. So yeah. So this this part yeah. took me fucking ages actually. Yeah. The dudes on the right and dudes on the left. That guy. You gonna take? Oh, okay. No, it will take him just yet. But I yeah. went. So there's a room behind you. Mm. Um, I lured the enemies out of there, and then you can see through the door there are some ballistas, and you can then kite the big dude back into that room and then hit mm. him with the ballistas. That was my plan, anyway. Hilarious. Um, and of course, that was a booby trap, so uh, the enemy there triggered it himself, but his friends probably won't. There we are. Do it all old fashioned way. Just a thrust. Quite a lot of them. Yeah. Could be a bit sticky here. Oh, he's not quite dead, is he? Seeing he's got the skills, though. Um, there he is. Oh, 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 oh no! Not the face! Oh, not the face! <laughs> oh god! Uh, all the arms, all the chest, or really any uh, part of me with a major artery in it. There we are, okay. There's a bit of a elevation check. Oh yes! That's a satisfying move. Yeah, attack that piece of scenery, you yeah. idiot. You dimbo. <laughs> It's uh, almost like he's got no brain. Rocks down. Oh, that was, that was kind of brutal. Yeah. Look at this. Slashing around the back of the neck and head. Who is this then? The room. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, 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 talk to the dude first. Either one. Actually, there's loads of loot in here. Lovely, lovely loot. Are these guys who apparently just charged the blister or something? I don't know where they're trying to. Why are the blisters all pointing towards this single hole in the door? That it? is uh, an excellent question. Yes. Um, yes. 
but uh, this was a city of the siege. So you see a lot of these defense buffers. Right? Some, uh, when I played through the first time, some colossal dickhead had left a message right in front of the ballistas so that every time, <laughs> unfortunately, the button to press to activate the ballistas is the same to activate the. Uh... Oh! Yep, it's okay. <laughs> Time my shard. Good dodge. Yeah, it's, uh, this is it's um, not. This it's is not the um, troll is. move of Dark Souls Two. If you put uh, in Dark Souls Two, it took me a long time to realise this, but instead of hitting walls to open secret walls, you, you just press A by them, which is different. Starts hmm. um, so people would leave messages here so close to the wall that you can't press A on the wall, and then claim that there's a, a message wall there. <laughs> it just isn't. Brilliant trolling. Um, don't have a Pharaoh's Lock Stone, you sort of need this. Put this stuff down here to get something. Later. I didn't know you could uh, fight the pursuer there actually. I didn't think I quite went up there and triggered him. Oh no. Um, but he's a, he's a fantastic boss and he kind of appears at various points throughout the game. So yeah. actually, you can probably. Uh... Oh, I just talk to this dude. Sorry, I don't know why I'm backseat driving for you. Yeah, you do what you yeah, like, man. Travelling yeah. all alone in these treacherous times. Who's that? It's the British actor. Is it really? I believe it is. Sounds like it. Does sound like it. Mm. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. I journey hither and thither on a sort of treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers. Like no. Yourself. Not in these places. I know. All the people we've met so far have been charming. They've <laughs> been perfectly lovely. Do you trust him? Do you trust old Pate? No, I don't. <laughs> this is the correct answer. Don't trust anyone in answer. No. <laughs> don't like his name either. It's a silly name. Be wary of enemy. That's a really useful message. Ah! <laughs> but he's not wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, no! It's an automatic, automatic lock-in. Well. But Richard O'Brien would have nothing to celebrate at this moment since you have foiled his evil plot. <laughs> Did all the paint, lock me in. Seems so nice. Hmm. I don't remember this very well, so. Long corridor! Let's see what happens. What could go wrong? Tree ahead. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Oh, nice. If you wait until they fall down on the ground, you get an instant kill. Okay. Wow. Are you uh, invulnerable during that animation? Um, well? I think not. Ooh, it's, it's weird. getting a bit sticky here now. I don't like it. I have lots of There we go. It's fine. Oh, it's Juicy thing. Aromatic, Aromatic ooze. ooze. Mm. My favourite kind of ooze. Prefer that to the uh, non-aromatic kind. He's a dumb pie, though. These uh, these guys are a bit um, handy on these stairs, aren't they? Really? They so are. They're um. I had a chance against you. I think this took me like eight times. I think uh, <laughs> the good thing about Dark Souls 2 compared to Dark Souls 1 on PC is that the frame rate is great, it's really well optimised. Hmm. And as a fighting game, it's just far more viable than Dark Souls 1. A lot of frustration I got with Dark Souls 1, which is sudden kind of frame rate dips. Oh, yeah. That get me killed. There's no, no excuse for that in a fighting game. Brutal. Like this sword. Who needs DLC swords, eh? You do that with it. <laughs> Worst thing you find. 
praise the sun, indeed. This one here? No. Fuck you, cart! Really embarrassing, uh, if you start as a naked dude, you just have to punch them endlessly to break them. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of time is spent just wailing on, wailing on carts. So this is the door with paint on one side and... Uh, Move down again. And trap on the other. Should we make a matter for himself? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can ask him what he's... I'll ask him. Oh, I won't hurt him. Well, so this I see you managed to escape. I hope that brave warrior didn't come a cropper either. Brave Be careful warrior. out mm, there. Indeed. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers. Okay, you said that. <laughs> oh. But you should take this. It allows undead to call out for help to one with luck. Some... We won't need any help, will we, Tom? No, no worries. No help. Ooh, juicy. That's good. So this is going to be green blossom. Yeah, that's good. Poison stuff. It's head. not aromatic ooze, but what can you do? Right, this is a place of nightmare because of him as well. And I think there's a guy on the cart on the left. It's basically just fucking awful. Let's go this way. Right, so we can, we'll find our first. Oh, oh dear. Okay. I'm afraid to do. Ah, so you didn't actually aggro any of those dudes. No. What could that be? Look at this. Look at it. it looks like a bit like a man, mm. but it's a tree. Human tree. Big old tree, tree like a giant tree. A giant tree. This used to be a tree. Hmm. It's strange about him. Alas, <laughs> nothing happened. Hmm. Oh. Well, there's more to be said. Yeah. Those with. <laughs> so yeah, this is a place that was under assault by the giants. Um, and uh, Anna Lond Anna Londo, it's the land of no, sorry, Lord Ram. Uh, it's the land of giants, isn't it? Yeah, well yes. Uh... But the extent to which it's actually kind of supposed to be it's so the same land of giants is a big matter of debate. In fact, um, if you talk to a lot of people in Dark Souls 2, uh, there's a sense that this is thousands and thousands of years after Dark Souls 1. Mm. And that uh, um, the kingdom has been subject to huge change, uh, both geographically and in terms of its mm. various... Industrial Revolution, invention of the spinning jenny, that the, kind of thing. All the good stuff, printing press and all that. And uh, yeah, there's. Uh, some people argue that actually we're in Lordran, but aeons later. Yeah, I don't see that much evidence of that from the actual geography itself. I've heard that positive, but um, mm. it does—it just doesn't look physically like the same place, like the, the landscape and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything in terms of game logic. Oh dear, oh this could go. It's go. the worst place to ever go. It's pretty tricky. That took me quite a number of. Ghost, I ended up I think, trying to drop fire bombs on them and stuff, but it just. Uh... Yeah, you want to get an early max up on one of them while it's waiting there. Uh, yeah, so the, the theory that this is the same place as Lord Ran is uh, interesting. If you actually map the entire place out, uh, it can't be Lord Ran because Lord Ran is wrapped around a giant tree. Like mm, it's yeah, yeah. a giant spiral, isn't it? Like the way it's all constructed. Although that is in the middle of a lake, right? In mm. Ash Lake, an Ash Lake surrounded by other trees. Mm. Um, so I mean, you could imagine if the water level rose a great deal, it might look something a bit like the coastline around Majula, but mm. it's it's, just, it's still quite a stretch, I think. And because because the land Majula is is so very horizontal, whereas you know uh, Lord Ran is extremely vertical. You just don't think that one could come from the other, really. But. Yeah, absolutely. Though there are kind of um, weird kind of ties from certain locations to other locations, like people tie. And Orlando to the Lapse Bastille, even though the architecture is completely different, oh. just the whole vibe of the place. And of course, in there you find Ornstein, mm. or someone who is wearing Ornstein's armor at least. So, um, the Cathedral Blue, right? You mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it does look a bit similar. Um, um, but I do wonder. I mean, how much of that is, you know, this, the extent to which you need to acknowledge the artifice and uh, with which games are created and. Mm. Uh, you know, it could be easy for a designer to say, hey, people love Dawnstein, why don't we just throw Dawnstein in? Mm. You know, it's in the same way that uh, Joss Whedon, uh, sorry, J.J. Abrams will include, uh, like, uh, some kind of 
hint about Alias in the Star Trek movies. Yeah. And people on the internet will go, wow, it means that Star Trek's in the Alias universe. And it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that Abrams wanted an in-joke. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, it's hard to know how much these games link in terms of the kind of cogent sense of lore and what's just fan service and kind of sly nods to the player and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But there are... Um... The kind of there's a bit more than fan service in the way that Dark Souls Two is tied to Dark Souls One, uh, especially when it comes to the major bosses of the game mm. and the descriptions um, associated with their souls. Um, I think there's, yeah, uh, which we'll probably get to a little bit later. But um, I think the the geography idea that this actually is that place is wrong. Um, it wouldn't need to be invaded if it was the same place, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, there's a degree to which I don't know that giant means the same thing. Like this yeah. is th there's a, a problem in uh, with understanding Dark Souls lore in general is that um, you think these words are very precisely chosen, um, but they're probably precisely chosen in the Japanese, mm. and you know the, the a lot of the times they're very literal as well. Like yeah. You, and, and somebody who is large can be called a giant, and yet not be from the same race as another person who is large is also called a giant. Yeah, you know, thousands also, of years later. Size is so flexible in Dark Souls anyway. Mm. Like important people are just larger. Uh, it's almost like their mm. um, their significance in the world uh, grabs them, like well, changes their form something. It's just in the middle of something. It'd be nice to get that short code. Yeah. Wow, that was uh, unexpected. <laughs> Just took took that five one right on top of the head there. No worries. <laughs> it's fine as long as you're backstabbing someone, then you're you're fine. You're vulnerable to fire. And did you meet? Do you meet giants at all? Like as like an express race in Dark Souls One? Yeah. I can't remember. Um, yeah, there's um, there's a couple of them, and there's the there's the Smith, who's a giant. Um, there are giants in oh, yes. Analondo anyway. There's also uh, uh, the Hawkeye, I think his name is actually, is it? Or something like that? Mm. Who um, gives you his Dragon Slayer bow. It's also a giant. There are giant blacksmiths in this game. Oh, what? Yeah, that's amazing. Cheeky. So you're going to take this dude on? Let's do it. Let's get to Oh god. <laughs> Do not want. This is actually kind of cool. Getting trapped in this animation. It's a bit of an AI fart. Yeah. Oh! That. Screw you, man. You see, that's what you can do with a blister. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Damn it. I had that guy trapped in an infinite, yeah. infinite cycle. Like, There's fucking firebombs. That guy's really out of place. Um, the turtley knights oh, yeah. uh, actually belong somewhere in this game. They come from the Iron Keep, and you'll fight a lot more of them there. And it's really strange that he's here uh, in this particular part. Well, there's quite a few of them around here, aren't there? Mm. Do you um, think maybe they were there to... Uh, what's their affiliation with the people who lived here? Were they fighting the giants? I think so. Were they in they, league yeah. with the giants? Mm. Sure. Uh, you want to actually, after you've finished off these two dudes, you want to take a look into the pit and see what's. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. No! Yes. Eight. Should really get some extra spots. What's that? Those guys. They're a little amphibian thing. They're adorable. They really are. Can you just leave the game? Did you ask it down there? Uh, not yet. Don't think we can do it yet. No. I'm going to ask it back here. Yeah, we need to get that uh, shortcut open somehow. Or we could just mill around this area. I think, actually, this area is actually kind of a... Is there, is there anything to do here other than collect stuff? And there's, there's a lot of stuff here. There's um, a lot of stuff, but... I, it's kind of an interesting loop. And there's um, a character down in those caves, down, I believe. Yeah, but yeah there is. Um, just the, the cool thing about having a hub in this game is that you can come through crew characters by talking to them and doing stuff for them. Mm. Uh, and then gradually grow the town, um, which is nice.
special, so we'll find him later. Right, we're gonna get this open. And, uh... Oh, fuck you. Mm, I didn't have that. I bought some black bombs, but I'm not got them equipped. There you go. Oh, oh, wait, ah, oh. Ah! <laughs> I don't know where you came from. You saw now, it's still Bonk. Shield break. Nice. Oh, broke my shield. Right. I love that you can switch to double handed and uh, in Dark Souls. It gives you a separate moveset. Mm. Uh, it makes you really flexible in combat. Ooh. Right. Yes! Hurrah! Finally. Hurrah for explosions. And as you can uh, see, it all ties back in, which is nice. I like that kind of level design. Let's have a little save. Yeah, Why don't we get the final well try? And maybe we'll call it quits for this, uh, this session. Well. Oh, ah! no! <laughs> Trying to ambush the session. No! Oh god. This, this is, could be this this is a dramatic ending. Just got personal. I destroyed You asshole. How dare you? We're trying to have a nice little sit down by the fire. I can't believe you came in here. Outrageous, outrageous behaviour. Cheerio! Bye! Uh...